Hey everyone, so we're gonna continue with our hypothesis test. And remember what we were trying to hypothesize. We were hypothesizing that Apple has an average level of market risk. Specifically, it's, or Apple's required return in excess of the risk free rate is the same as the market's or S&P 500's required excess return. And we can summarize that in this regress regression equation here like so. And usually the estimated population parameter, that is B1, is represented by the Greek symbol beta and the intercept alpha. So this is the same equation, just different notation. And we're gonna use this going forward. So our null hypothesis, that is H naught, is that beta for Apple is equal to one. And our alternative hypothesis, H sub A, is that beta, that is here, is not equal to one. That's what's interesting. We wanna test the hypothesis that beta is equal to one. So we can perform a hypothesis test using two approaches. There's the confidence interval approach, and then there's the t-test of significance. We're gonna begin with the confidence interval approach in this video. So we need three things when developing this. We need one, the estimated parameter value, that is B1. Number two, we need the hypothesized value of the parameter, that is, we believe it's gonna be one. And finally, we need a confidence interval around that estimated parameter of B1. So what is a confidence interval? So a confidence interval, that is an interval of values that we believe includes the true parameter value of B1. And so we can compute a confidence interval. In order for us to do that, we must select, obtain a significance level for the test, number one, and that significance level is gonna determine our T-critical value. And also we need to know the standard error of the estimated coefficient, that's S sub B1. So our confidence interval is gonna span these values. It's gonna span from the range B1 minus the, this confidence interval of t-critical times the standard error, and B1 plus this t-critical value times the standard error. And so we can say B1 plus or minus this confidence interval of t-critical value times the standard error of the coefficient. So let's actually develop this, see if we can put this together. So from our results, we already know our params. We can say results.params. Those are the parameters that we estimated for both the intercept and the slope coefficient. We're going to be, we're interested just right now in the slope coefficient of 1.26. And so we also need to know, or we're, we've already obtained the standard error of these different parameters, estimated parameters. And so we can say results.bse. And there we go, we have our standard errors. Now all we need to do is obtain the t critical value. So to do this, we need to know our degrees of freedom. So the critical value for a test, it depends on the number of degrees of freedom for the T distribution. So the number of degrees of freedom, that equals the number of observations minus the number of parameters estimated. What do I mean by that? Well, since this is a regression of a one independent variable, we have two estimated parameters. We have the intercept and we have the slope coefficient. So for us to get the degrees of freedom, we just need to take the number of observations minus two. And we know the number of observations here ahead I believe it was 71, we can verify that. There we go, 71. And if we subtract two, we get the degrees of freedom here, and it will be 69. So we know that the degrees of freedom, so we'll say degrees of freedom is equal to 71 minus two parameters, and that will just be 69. So now, we know, now that we know the degrees of freedom, we need to determine our significance level we're gonna use a 95% confidence interval for our test. This is equivalent to saying that we will have a test that has a significance level of 0 0.05. So since we know that, we can find our t-critical value. And there's two ways to approach this. We could just look online and look up a t-table and we can input our significance level of 0 0.05 and look for our degrees of free freedom of 69 and find our t-critical value. So for example, we could go to this t-table here. And remember, this is a two-tailed test. So we're gonna go here to tail test 0.05. And we know that our degrees of freedom is 69. So let's say right around 60. Should be about roughly two or 1.99. But of course we can also do this in Python. So we can import from SciPy, import stats. And we can just say stats.t.isf and we can input 0.05, but remember this is a two-tailed test, so we need to divide this by two, so it's gonna be 0.025, and 
and we can input our degrees of freedom. And you'll notice if we go to this T table here, we're looking at the 0 0.05 significance level, which is equivalent to a confidence interval level of 95%. And also, since it's a two-tailed test, for a one-tailed test, we'd be looking at 0 0.025. And that's exactly what our function is outputting here for a one-tailed test. But this is a two-tailed test, so we need to input a, a significance level of 0 0.025. So we're going to say this is T critical value is equal to TC critical value and I'm just going to output t critical value and it's going to be 1.9949 which is very close to what we were looking at here on our t table. So now that we have our t critical value we have our standard error of the estimated coefficient and we have our estimated parameter of b1 1.26 we can determine our confidence interval. So we're just going to take results dot params so I'll put that again that's 1.26 and we're just going to subtract our confidence interval. So we're going to say t critical value times results.bsc1 for the element 1. That's going to be 0.27. Run that. So that's our first span of our confidence interval. And I'm just going to copy this. And instead of subtracting, we're going to add 1.80527. So again, let's summarize what we have done here. We've estimated a, a parameter beta from the regression, and that was 1.26. And we have the estimated standard error for that coefficient in the regression, that is 0 0.27. We've determined our degrees of freedom is 69. And we've also determined our critical value of 1.99, given a significance level of 0 0.05. So therefore, we have a 95% confidence interval, and it's shown by this range of 0 0.71, spanning from 0 0.71 to 1.80. So how can we interpret this? So since the hypothesized parameter, that is B beta equals 1, that's we, what we were hypothesizing, since that value of 1 falls inside this confidence interval, we cannot reject the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, that at the 0 0.05 significance level. This is equivalent to saying that we cannot reject the hypothesis that Apple stock has the same risk or systematic risk as the market as a whole. 